on the News Leader. Proud to serve Western Indiana and Eastern Illinois, this is WTHI-TV Terre Haute. Closed captioning of the following program is brought to you by WTHI-TV and Terre Haute First National Bank. And now, the Wabash Valley's leading newscast with Mark Allen and Patrice Dayton. Kevin Orford with advanced storm track weather. Mike King with sports. And the area's most experienced live coverage. This is Action 10 News. You just get mad at everything in general. You get mad at Marathon. You get mad at why didn't you pick something else for a career. After 19 years, a company man received a pink slip and is left with no job and few options. Thanks for joining us. In August, Marathon Oil officially told 71 employees in its Robinson Lubrication Shop they couldn't afford to keep them on board. Today, many of the workers came to the refinery for the last time. Some paperwork and a few goodbyes brought many careers to an end. Action 10's Gene Cox found one lube shop worker who's still trying to figure out where he'll be getting his next paycheck. Yeah, there's just a whole, you know, a whole bunch of emotion goes through you. Mike Connor describes when he first heard the rumor mill grinding at work. Everyone a buzz. Marathon's Robinson Lube Shop would quit pouring and packaging lubricants by the end of October. Numerous things go through your mind. You got people that you want to pay your house off or, you know, something along that line. There's food to put on the table daily and kids have got to go to school and their supplies. It's really a reflection of competition. It's unfortunate, but uh, today you have to uh, you have to be focused on the bottom line as an organization, and uh, and you have to make difficult decisions. Marathon hasn't lent the bottom line keep it from absorbing some of the shock. Thirty-five of the lube shop workers have been transferred internally, but Mike is one of the twenty or so without a job entirely. And to make matters worse, he and his wife say. They're forced to sell their home. The Connors built the house with a dream in mind. They wanted a home that could last them a lifetime. From the clean country air to a pond in the backyard, it's 15 years of memories they don't want to leave behind. Most of our young life has been here. I'd hate to have to give this up, but if it's something... He believes everything in life done, happens for a reason. Like this, he hopes, is a lesson that'll be short-lived. Gene Cox, Action 10 News, Crawford County. Mike Connor hopes to get federal grant money that will enable him to go back to school. Our top story continues. Even in the wake of the marathon layoff, unemployment statistics still look better around the region compared to last year's numbers. According to Illinois statistics, last September, Crawford County's unemployment rate hit 7.8%. But this September was at just over 7%. Unemployment figures are looking better in Cumberland, Jasper, and Coles County, too. Coles County employing an extremely low 3.4% for September. Those county figures are a reflection of the state. The Illinois unemployment figure stands at 5%, down from 7.5% last year. The good news just keeps coming for a Terre Haute company. Applied Extrusion Technologies Incorporated set a production record last month in its packaging films division. You may remember AET bought the Terre Haute Hercules plant earlier this year, then announced a major expansion for the site. Applied Extrusion Technologies makes plastic packaging films for food beverages and for candy. A new plan for the proposed 641 bypass in Vigo County is gaining momentum. Terre Haute Mayor Pete Chalis today gave his recommendation for the latest attempt to make traveling through the city an easier ride. For there to be a diamond uh, intersection about a mile from uh, 46, which saves a considerable amount of money, it does not require a restructuring of the intersection at 46 and I 70. So the savings from those two items can be used for a more efficient uh, intersection at 46 and 641. Doesn't, doesn't Mayor Taylor says any plan will have to be approved by state and county officials before it can be implemented. State Representative Vern Tencher and County Commissioner Jim Deal have planned a meeting with an official from the State Department of Transportation to talk about the plan. State lawmakers are deciding the makeup of Indiana's annual achievement test, IPASS. Officials say the new test they're working on emphasizes expression and thought instead of multiple choice guesswork. State leaders discussed the changes today during a three hour briefing at the State House. Some state education department officials estimate that as many as 30% of the students who take the current IPASS test fail. 800 schools will hand out a pilot test next month. 
A final version of the new tests are supposed to go into effect next year. The emergency is over. That's the word from the Central Indiana Regional Blood Center. The blood supply is no longer critically low. You may remember last week we reported the supply was so low, some surgeries in Terre Haute were being put off. Donors responded to the emergency, and the blood inventory has been replenished to a two-and-a-half-day supply. However, Regional Blood Center cautions that regular donations are always needed, and the winter months ahead are traditionally the most difficult time of year for the blood supply. The Terre Haute Community Blood Center is located at 2021 South 3rd Street. Their donation hours are from 9 to 6, Monday through Friday. Please help if you can. Well, no lack of chilly temperatures in the forecast. Kevin is with the colder details later. And it looked like the real thing. Some say this Halloween hoax was too frightening to be a fake. And these little fakes aren't out to frighten anyone. We'll tell you about their tricks and treats next. The next administration. In case you thought asteroids were about to hit planet Earth last night, you certainly weren't alone. Apparently, the CBS movie Without Warning was a little too real. The movie depicted news coverage of giant asteroids striking the Earth. And even though the broadcast carried disclaimers, police stations, newspapers, and TV stations across the state, including ours, got dozens of calls from people who thought asteroids were on their way. In fact, one family wanted information on the location of bomb shelters. Again, it was just a movie. A scare of a different kind, Halloween. Ghosts and goblins, Power Rangers and Barneys are probably already making it to your door. If you're one of those going door to door, here's some helpful advice. Make sure you only visit homes with a porch light on. Have a parent or another adult check your candy before you eat it and keep in mind, it's dark outside. Make sure you wear light colored clothing and watch for cars. In Terre Haute and many other towns around the valley, trick or treat time are from 6 until 9 tonight. But some just couldn't wait until tonight to show off their costumes, so these kids at We Care Daycare Center got to try out their new identities for the day before heading out to trick-or-treat tonight as princesses and power rangers. And over at the Lakeview Nursing Home, there was no lack of Halloween spirit either. The folks there spent the day entertained by all sorts of characters and didn't have to go trick-or-treating to get their share of some great candy. Well, teeth might be chattering over something other than Halloween frights tonight. Yes, like scary, stormy weather. Kevin <laughs> with the chills and thrills coming up next. Hey, Kevin, this is Julie. And this is Chris. What's the weather for Halloween night? Well, Julie, Chris, I noticed you had a little trouble with your hair. It's going to continue to be windy tonight. and Maybe not the, gra the greatest for trick-or-treating. We'll have complete details next. Just feeling. I got a few trick-or-treaters at my house last night. Did you? I Tell think me. Power Ranger is the big one. That's very popular, isn't it? That, it's going to be kind of a dark and stormy night, it looks like, for Halloween. Yeah, Mary Poppins might be good, because, you know, you'd have the umbrella inside. That's true. Because, and a uh, coat on. Yes, that's true. I, it, it's actually fairly mild here in Terre Haute, but you don't have to go very far, and you find some much cooler temperatures. And there's a reason for that. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But let's talk, uh, first of all, about Weather School, brought to you by Country Companies Insurance and Farm Bureau Insurance and... Here's the weather school question, true-false question for tonight. And, well, uh, I, I remember what it is. Good. Okay, I remember go ahead. The amount of salt in the ocean has a direct effect on our weather. Is that true or is that false? The amount of salt the in the ocean. The amount of salt in the ocean okay. has an effect on our weather. Okay, now let's see if I have anything else that might come up on the screen. Uh, it's uh, now raining with a temperature reading outside of 65 degrees. Winds from the south, anywhere up to, well, 13, 15, 18 miles per hour, gusting at times to 25. And some of our weather watchers reporting in and saying uh, down around Vincennes, they've had wind gusts of 50 miles per hour. High today, 71. Average high is 60. 1950, it was 83. 1988, it got down to 20 to set the record low. Our low this morning was 48. The barometer is 29, 29, 53. And it has fallen. And the humidity is 70%. The dew point's 55. If you've got achy joints and so on. I'm not surprised tonight. The river is holding steady at just under one and a half feet. We've measured three-tenths of an inch so far in about the last hour, so for the month it puts us up at 1.61, but still not quite close to the average for October. We'll have to see by 11.30 tonight how this thing uh, unfolds year to date at 30.56. The sun will rise at 7.18, sunsets at 5.49, new moon will be the third, and the air quality today was moderate because of dirt and dust in the atmosphere 
and the pollen count two and the mold count 23. Wet streets in downtown Terre Haute showing up on the Action 10 Tower Cam. A reminder, by the way, you know, you don't need me to lecture you, but little trick-or-treaters are going to be out there. There's a guy blasting through the light with one headlight. You know, you got to watch out for folks like that, and you can barely see somebody crossing the street. So be aware if you're going to be out and about later tonight. It's nature's trick, no doubt, with Chicago. It's, look at this. Chicago has 44, and Bloomington 66, Champaign has 46, and Evansville 68 degrees, so there's definitely much warmer air right across this portion of Indiana. And, of course, a look at the uh, Doppler radar site out of St. Louis shows us quite a lot of rain moving up to the northeast at about 35 miles per hour. This one is out of uh, St. Louis. This gives you a little better picture of Indiana. Once again, you can see these showers and a few embedded thunder showers uh, moving across the TV10 viewing area. We had some showers. These were the ones, by the way, that brought wind gusts of 50 miles per hour down to around Vincennes. Also brought about three-tenths of an inch of rain to Ruth Langston and Palestine. Tyler Clapp over in Newton, Illinois had about a quarter of an inch of rain. As you can see, we have one wave and then another one and then maybe a little bit more rain coming through. Once again, off and on rain showers tonight and breezy conditions. Now, with these rainstorms going through and this warm air trying to move up, there is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect. Actually, it's not included in the TV10 viewing area proper, but I know we've got fans down at Brown and Monroe counties, also Orange and Lawrence counties. So those regions down and through there, supposedly a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 11 o'clock Indiana time. We'll keep you posted on that one. A lot of good moisture coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico and also off of the Pacific, as you can see, that's being caught up into this region and through here, which is why now we're starting to get some of the kind of weather we're having with a very good cloud cover. You can see how all of this moisture is moving up actually very rapidly. And so while an area of low pressure you can see is circulating here starts to lift up across, it's going to bring us the chance for some rain and windy conditions tonight. Forecast then is for windy, chilly, rainy, and overnight low tonight of 40 to 45. I guess this is kind of like the Halloween ought to be, I suppose. And then for tomorrow, maybe some rain uh, lingering around in the morning. Windy, chilly tomorrow. 50 to 55, but uh, a windy day, clearing colder tomorrow night, 32 to 35 in the extended forecast. Wednesday and Thursday look pretty nice. We may have to see some rain back in the picture by, well, toward the uh, latter part of the week. All right, now, weather school question. The, it's just hard to imagine. The amount of salt in the ocean can affect the weather. Is that true or is that false? Sure. Yeah, I think it's true. It is true because little particles of salt get up into the atmosphere, and that gives an opportunity for moisture to latch onto that and turn into clouds and rain and things like that. A little seasoning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. okay. Thanks, Kev. Okay. Later, track and field star loses his bid for big dollars. Mike King will have the tales. They might have been singing Don't Fence Me In, but someone didn't hear their tune. The case of the Lost Horses next. Turkey, 59 cents a pound, and regular or Diet Coke, 24 packs of 12-ounce cans, $3.99 with coupon and $10 additional purchase. You're taking a big risk driving... On Wall Street today, the Dow is down 22.54, New York Stock Exchange down 74 Amex up 41, gold dropped 380, and silver was down 10 cents. Courtesy of Terra First National Bank, the most active local stocks, Pfizer up 3 8 Health Trust down 1 8 Bemis down 1 8 and General Housewares down 1 half. At Graham Grain and Growers Co-op in Terre Haute, corn 186, beans 512, wheat off the board, Milo 333, and oats at $1 49. And the Indianapolis livestock market, hog trading 27 even, no test on steers or heifers. The vice president of West Terre Haute's town council spent some time in the Vigo County Jail over the weekend. Dickie Hedden was officially charged this afternoon with driving while intoxicated and for refusing to take a breathalyzer test. Police say Hedden was involved in a one-car accident on US 150 and St. Mary's Road. Apparently, Hedden lost control of his car and hit a stop sign around 7.30 last night. He has been released from jail on his own recognizance. Now here's a message for horse owners who might be missing an animal. The three horses you see here are lost. They got loose a few days ago and have been running in the Pimento area. Horses have been for about three days. Uh, our officers got called down into the Pimento area this morning about 7 o'clock and located three horses and a donkey running together. And they were able to get them corralled and uh, pinned up at a, a private area at this time. The donkey has been returned to its owner. The horses will remain in the private fenced-in area until their owners claim them. Anyone with information about the three horses should contact Indiana State Police, 812-299-1151. I didn't look too upset. How do you lose a horse? <laughs>
They wanted to run free. <laughs> well, speaking of animals, Friday's pet favorite kittens are not on the loose, but they might be mewing somewhere new. An update later. And Mike King takes a look back at the best and worst of the sports weekend. Next. <laughs> tonight. Yeah, indeed. It should be a good one, too. A lot of people there paying tribute to two former greats. Week 9 of the NFL's regular season wraps up tonight at Soldier Field as the Bears play host to the Packers. Always a good game. Gail Sayers and Dick Butkus, they will both have their jerseys retired tonight at halftime. Now, it's no doubt been an uncomfortable Monday for some college football coaches who are on the hot seat following their team's weekend performances. Many IU alumni say they plan to wear T-shirts bearing the phrase, Mallory must go after the Hoosiers lost at East Lansing on Saturday. Indiana's bowl hopes are fading quickly after back-to-back -back losses to Northwestern and Michigan State. What's worse is that Bill Mallory's team will look to bounce back against number one ranked Penn State this Saturday in Bloomington. Not an easy thing to do. Indiana State will have to close out with back-to-back -back wins against Western Kentucky and Youngstown State to avoid its 10th consecutive losing season under Dennis Rates. The Sycamores blew a 14-0 lead at Eastern Illinois, lost 30-21. ISU has now lost four of its last five. And five straight losing seasons has prompted Ohio University to fire football coach Tom Lichtenberg. The Bobcats are winless in eight games this fall. Well, with the Winston Cup points championship already decided, most of the excitement that had surrounded the good old boys in recent weeks has died down, but Fans in Phoenix were still happy to see him line up and race on the one-mile oval out in the desert. John Andretti's STP Pontiac made a beeline for the STP banners on the wall in turn three early on. The result, the car was finished, the banners looked pretty bad, and there was a hole in the wall that stopped the race for a half hour. When they got back to green flag conditions, Terry Labonte was K-E-L-L-O-Double-Good -L -O -double -good in that cornflakes car. He ran away from the field to earn his third win of the season, taking the checkers at the slick 50. 500. Butch Reynolds' long legal battle ended today. The result was not what the sprinter had hoped for. Four years ago, Reynolds was banned by the International Amateur Athletic Federation after failing a drug test. Reynolds sued the IAAF, saying he had never taken steroids. He won $27 million in damages in federal court in Columbus, Ohio. Last May, though, the 6th U.S. Court of Appeals threw out that award, saying that because the case involved events in Europe, the judge lacked jurisdiction. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court agreed with the appeals court, and Reynolds won't get one cent. Time once again for a glimpse into the weekend past. Every Monday, we do just that, and we call it the best and worst of the weekend, brought to you by your hometown hardware store, Pateson Brothers. True value, our first stop, the Meadowlands, for yesterday's Lions-Giants game and the best return of the weekend. New York's Dave Meggett looks like he is dead meat down there on the sideline, but no. Instead, he cuts across the field, finds some running room. In fact, he'll go all the way for the score. But Detroit won the game. To Marshall for Saturday's IHSA playoff game. The worst feeling for a TV sports cameraman. Bob Bruce saw him coming, but he's not quite as fast as he used to be. The option lines up in Bob's lap, and thankfully, he was not seriously injured. We can't say the same for his gear. Bob found another camera and was back at work Sunday at the Dome. The best start of the weekend. Quarterback Don Mikowski had not started a game in more than two years, but yesterday against the Jets, he hit Floyd Turner with a TD pass, and by golly, even scored one himself on the run around the left side as the Colts beat New York 28-25. to To San Francisco for the final round of the Tour Championship, the best money putt of the weekend. First hole of sudden death, Mark McCumber. Needs to roll in this 45-footer for the win. That putt worth a cool half million bucks. To Sacramento for NBA preseason action, the worst vertical jump in the league. At 7, 6 and a half, you'd figure Manu Bull would be looking down at the rim when he jams, but the Warriors' big man can only put about six inches of air beneath his size 23 high top to the hardwood, but hey, it counts just the same. And our final stop, Pomona, California, for the Winston Select Finals and the best ride of the weekend, Kenny Bernstein, far lane, outdoes Corey McClendon in the top fuel final during the quarter mile in 4.72 seconds at a speed of 314.46 miles an hour. And wow. that, folks, is a ride. Zoom. Yeah. Size 23 sneaker. Size 23, but he just can't jump. Not a lick. Well, no wonder with those feet. <laughs> we'll be right back. Dakota Sport V6. About 20 miles south of Maryville tonight. Some reports say that it is an American Airlines 
airliner that left Indianapolis bound for Chicago O'Hare Airport. Reports right now are saying no survivors. We will, of course, have an update for you on Night Watch. Also new for Night Watch, Terre Haute workers are down in the dumps these days. The reason? Illegal dumping, and it's costing taxpayers money. Plus, many restaurants and fast food chains say trouble is brewing over coffee. Our Dr. Gina Dell reports on a danger that goes beyond the taste. Kevin has your morning forecast, and Mike King updates the Monday night football game, all tonight at 11, 10 in Illinois. Well, we have the perfect treat for you Halloweeners. How about a kitten from the Tarot Humane Shelter? These nine-week-old kitties are still looking for good homes. One was a male tiger-striped cat, the other a female calico. Now, if you'd like to adopt these kittens or any other cat or dog, give the Tarot Humane Shelter a call or stop by. They'd be glad to help you find a new friend. They were cute. They fit just right into your Halloween bag. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful out there trick-or-treating tonight. We'll see you back here on Nightwatch. Good night. Have a good evening. We'll see you later tonight. The Sheriff's Office in Newton County, 